Welcome back, everybody, to AuburnVersus.com. Mike Cervantes, the sports editor of the Opelika Auburn News, here with Colin Mickle, the beat writer for the Opelika Auburn News. And, and Colin, since we last were on, the scrimmage took place, the second scrimmage, the last scrimmage of, of the preseason. What came out of that scrimmage Friday night? Again, it, well, this, was, this was another one close to the public and to the media. Um, some questions had to be answered on the offensive line and quarterback and receiver. What came out of that, and, and where does Auburn stand now? I think Auburn's really close to, uh, obviously they've already split into scout team and varsity. They're really close to having a, a real two deep. You know, there's still a couple threes up there, but uh, basically, you know, most of the position battles we've been talking about for a month are very close to being settled. Lee Zimba looks like he is going to be entrenched at right tackle, uh, which is, you know, pretty impressive for a true freshman. Uh, looks like Chris Slaughter's going to play. Uh, you know, they've, they've worked out the offensive line. They've got, uh, you know, their, their rotations at almost every position. Who are the top, who are the five in the offensive line? Obviously, Kenny Dunlap at left tackle and Jason Bosley at center, those two guys. But, but now across the line, Leon Hart's still injured. Don't know if he's coming back. What, what does the offensive look like across the board? Let's go, let's go left to okay. right. Uh, excuse me as I pick something out of my <laughs> eye. Um, basically, we got Ken, King Dunlap at left tackle. Tyrone Green, who I have been singing the praises of for two years. Tyrone Green is going to be the starter at left guard. Bosley at center. Uh, Mike Berry is going to be your right guard um, because Leon is still hurt. You know they're looking at they think he might have they're looking at a ligament in his ankle. Uh, that ankle injury may be more serious than we you know previously expected. And then Zimba at right tackle. Uh, that's their that's their line right now. And and now with Zimba being a true freshman, like it or not, or, or however you think about it, it, it's about time that they have a sure five now because you've got a week and a half to the game start to, to the first game against Kansas State September first. So you have to have a five-man rotation, or not even a rotation. You have to have a five-man lock on who you're going to play. So freshman, sophomore, senior, junior, what doesn't matter now, you've got to get some consistency and get these guys playing again. No question. And so with, with Zimba at the right tackle, the, the Brandon Cox's backside, I mean, that's that's probably one of the most important positions on the field, if not the most important, with a freshman. How does he, how's he going to measure up? I mean, is he going to be able to handle some of the pressures? At home, maybe, but on the road, going to Baton Rouge and Gainesville and places like that? I mean, Lee Zimba is a, is a freshman. He's not your typical freshman. First of all, he's a big kid. I mean, right. he's, he's, he's got the body of an Auburn football player right now. You know, he may not be as muscular as, as Kevin Yoxel would like, right. but he is a big, strong guy, right. and, and I think physically he's totally ready. And mentally, the guy is sharp. I mean, he's, you know, he, he has handled, obviously he hasn't been to Baton Rouge yet, but he's handled everything that they've asked him to do very well. He's not a guy who jumps off sides. He's just not a guy who makes freshman mistakes, at least not yet. And, you know, Hugh Nall is going to keep an eye on that. I mean, obviously they know that he's a freshman too, but so far he has not given them any reason to think that he will not be a very good football player. And it remains to be seen exactly what will happen with that offensive line. In, in the wide receiver camp, uh, Greg Knox said he had five guys he knew of last week that could step up and play, but he needs six. They carry six with the, with the three positions and play with people playing all around. Who are the six now? Is there a sixth? And, and, and who are they? And, and what are we expecting from the wide receiver court? Knox is playing. It's still pretty close to the vest, but I mean, I think the the playing rotation is going to end up. I mean, the starters are set. They're, the starters, these guys, if they stay healthy, will probably start 13 games. Brzee Rodriguez, Robert Dunn, and of course Rod Smith are your three starters when Auburn plays three wides. Dunn at the slot, uh, Prichet at the X, I think, and Rod at the Z. And I apologize if I got that backward. It's one or the other. Uh, and then the backups are. I mean, the the, the next three guys are going to come from a group of about five guys. Tim Hawthorne's in that mix. James Swinton's in that mix. Chris Slaughter, who I thought was a surefire red shirt because he looks like a Q-tip in shoulder pads, mm -hmm. is going to play. He's a slender young man who I worry about getting broken in half, but he's going to play. Um, let me see. There's Terrell Zachary is a guy who's really on the edge of scout team varsity. No one seems to know. Uh, James Swinton, so fast. He, he makes plays. He hasn't done it in a game situation yet. He's been here for four years. It's time for him to make the varsity after you know three years of mostly scout team work. Uh, you know those, that's your, those are the guys that are in the mix. Right, and, and, Roz, or excuse me, and, and Chris Slaughter. 6'3", 160 pounds by your program, and if you don't know how small 160 pounds is on a 6'3 frame, don't look at me. Imagine half. Look at the guy. Right, look at yeah. Look at this guy. This is this is 6'3", 160 pounds. A buck well, you, 75. Well, you had a biscuit this morning. <laughs> a so, buck 75. Chris right? Swigert is downright. Chris Swigert is our slim cameraman. That's is right. downright burly compared to Chris Slaughter. It's unbelievable. He looks like you look like a lumberjack next to Slaughter. But the but the thing about Slaughter though is everybody says he's a natural talent. He's just effortless when he catches the football. So we'll see again how he can come across the middle and take a couple of licks and not only catch the ball but block downfield, crack back block, things like that. That, that wide receivers in this offense are going to have to do. Let's switch now. Let's switch gears to the quarterback situation. Seems like there's a two and a three, at least at, not set in stone, but it seems that you know Blake Field is going to be your two, Cody Burns is going to be your three, and maybe even scout team duties. How does the quarterback situation shake out after the scrimmage? I mean, that's pretty much exactly how it shook out. Insminger's working with the scout team right now. Uh, Burns, uh, sorry, Burns, Cox, and Blake Field are all with the varsity. Uh, 
I still don't think Burns is going to play, but he's getting a lot of work with that second team offense. You know, he's a guy who can make plays. The only problem is when you play a freshman at quarterback, sometimes he makes plays for the other team too. And, uh, you know, that's something I think that they're, they're very worried about. I think having a freshman right tackle is one thing. Having a freshman quarterback, even as a situational player, is not something that Auburn's coaches seem comfortable with right now. But, you know, Field is definitely the number two quarterback right now, even if they haven't made an official announcement. Uh, Burns is the number three, and obviously Cox is the unquestioned starter. Yeah, and, and I think it's a smart move with, with Field as the number two. He's been that for the last two years. He's played in situ- in game situations. He's even started a game against Western Kentucky in 2005. Do you see that changing at all or going into the – I mean, you're going to have to have a surefire backup if Cox goes down. He was hurt last year, didn't miss any, didn't miss any snaps in, in games that – that he needed to play with injuries, but again, with the offensive line, can Cox make it through the series, through the season? And if he can, is Phil the guy who can come in and play? I mean, right now, you know, if they played tomorrow and Brandon got hurt on the first play, I think Blake Field would be the guy who's buckling his chin strap and going in. They have a lot of confidence in Blake. Uh, I've talked to Brandon, I've talked to Al Borges, I've talked to Tommy Tuberville, and I've talked to Blake himself, and they all talk about, as I'll write in tomorrow, Wednesday's Open Like Auburn News, they all talked about how he's rededicated himself. He's, you know, just, he's a different player. He's more mature. And this is, he knows this is a big year for him. He knows that Brandon Cox is not going to be here next year. You know, there's a job to be won, and the process of winning it starts, started August 1st when they started practicing. Now Auburn's in their game week schedule, I guess, with Saturday or Sunday. Monday's off, practice Sunday, off Monday, then back in Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then off again this Saturday trying to get prepared for Kansas State. Scout teamers, people who already know who where they are. There's a couple back and forth. Who are some freshmen who are going to play this year? Uh, as I wrote in, I think it was Sunday's Open Like Auburn News, there are eight guys right now who are definitely working with the varsity and definitely in the mix. Uh, excuse me, nine guys, actually. There's Lee Zemba. He's going to be a starter. He's going to be Auburn's first freshman starter at a, as a position player since 2002 when Michael Mc, er, Marcus McNeil and Troy Reddick did it. I'm sorry, Marcus. I remember your name. You're a great guy. Uh, there's Michael McNeil who... Is you know he's going to play at the safety. He's probably their number three safety right now. He's going to play a lot on defense. There's Brent Slusher, who a month ago that dude was a tight end, and three weeks ago he was a defensive end, but now he's making plays at uh, at weak side linebacker or strong side linebacker, one or the other. And uh, you know he's he's going to be in the mix. Bo Harris, if he can th- get his shoulder healthy, is going to be in the mix. Uh, that's four. My gosh, Cody Burns. Is practicing with the varsity. He'll, he maybe he'll red play. Shirt. Yeah, I mean, he maybe he'll redshirt. Maybe he won't. But, but there's a possibility. He's definitely in the mix. Right. Uh, Chris Slaughter is a guy who's going to play. Ryan Pugh. They would like to redshirt Ryan Pugh, but he is their second team center right now. And if Jason Bosley gets hurt, Ryan Pugh's in the mix. That's and there. That's what it is. And then, so, so Auburn, there's, there's got that. This is where it shakes out, kind of, who's going to be on the bus and who's not when they travel. So we'll figure that all out. Kansas State is here, September first, right, right, Jordan Hare Stadium, as you can see uh, in the background. Six forty-five kick Central on ESPN, and we're looking forward to the start of the season. We'll be back next Tuesday after the first press conference of the season with Tommy Tuberville talking to some more players. Stay tuned on AuburnVersus.com. Check it out. Daily blogs, stories, forums, whatever you want, it's there. AuburnVersus.com. We'll see you next week. Daily blogs. Ha, ha, ha.